people have money to spend. In a bid to empower the youth with essential knowledge for economic development, the Ethical African Organization hosted a conference at Lake Victoria Hotel in Entebbe. The event brought together young minds eager to explore Uganda's economy under the theme Rethinking Uganda's Economic Development Agenda. As the sector grows, I don't think you know, the labor employ more than a thousand people directly. I mean, the subcontractors could create a bit of jobs. So the reality is that government is not a mass employer. Dennis Yekoyasi Kakembo, a distinguished taxation lawyer, highlighted on the factors hindering Uganda's economic growth. Uganda's tax rate on pay as you earn is at 40%, a substantial burden for employees since it diminishes disposable income, which could otherwise boost demand, production, and economic opportunities. I think as a country, we would like to be grateful to God who has enabled us to overcome many of the challenges we've experienced as a nation. Many times when I'm speaking to colleagues, I like to reference the political history of our country. Uganda has not had it easy. Uh, immediately after independence, we plunged ourselves into political instability, which pushed us many years uh, back. But then even after the political instability was resolved, we had the AIDS scourge uh, through which a lot of our productive people lost their lives. So inevitably that affected the trajectory of our economic growth. But fortunately, we've managed to put all that back behind us. And uh, when you look at how we, we are performing in East Africa, if you look at the statistics, Uganda uh, exports more to its neighbors than it imports, which uh, is telling of the resilience that we have as a nation. But more to that, we have pertinent issues uh, as a nation which have got to be dealt with. Uh, in, in terms of uh, population, we have, I think, the third youngest population in the world. Almost over 75% of the population in Uganda is below the age of 75. At the moment, we are about 45 million people. But in 27 years, I think we are projected to hit about 100 million. So what that means is that as a nation, we have to think hard. We have to think hard how we are going to manage to meet the aspirations of the young people, how the young people are going to be given uh, uh, employment opportunities, how infrastructure is going to be dealt with. And I think the forum we've had today has given us a very good opportunity to discuss and deliberate key issues of uh, issues we need to think about and uh, ponder uh, as Uganda goes ahead. Reflecting on the conference's goal, Imran Lutakome Chigongo, the founder and executive director of Ethical African Organization emphasized the importance of sound economic policies and suggested improvement to the youth livelihood policy. Particularly, we, we, we tapped into, for example, government policy on youth livelihood programs. So the better way of living with over 300 billion in debt, unpaid money, borrowed to people who are unqualified, what about setting up uh, proper institutions with stream streamlined systems and also educate these people before being given money? So amongst all other policies, uh, we've also looked at uh, the, the taxation. We see people who are unfairly taxed. Uh, the private sector, the payers you earn, the unfair taxation is killing the entrepreneurial spirit in that case. Government adapts some of our proposals. We are going to achieve economic soundness. We are going to at least see the priv private sector thriving. We are going to achieve an environment that enables business. We are going to see people coming up and starting up entrepreneurial projects and at the end they are going to curb down the unemployment levels. The ethic of African organization, a liberty think tank based in Entebbe, remains dedicated to transforming society through advocacy for better policies and civil liberties. For Kumba Investor News, Elliot Owen Ojambo.